Michael, could you and Dante talk a little to the the look of the film and how you how you achieved it? Because the the thing that I love about it is this. It's stylish without being self-conscious. It's it's sort of effortlessly, timelessly beautiful. Uh, and in in the new uh, restoration that you've done, uh, particularly, I mean, it, it it plays absolutely of today. I mean, it's it's very very restrained. Uh, but there's some extremely adventurous uh, techniques at play there that were very ahead of their time. I think uh, in terms of some of the the magic hour shooting, for example, on the city lights and uh, so forth. Can I say a little thing before? Please. I lose the memory. Um, I would like. I don't know if this movie needs to be any better, or needed to be any better than what it is, but I have to say something provocative here from a technical standpoint. The movie is better because of the transition to digital uh, 4K technology. First of all, because <coughs> it has been done extremely well by Michael and uh, Stefan Sonnenfeld, the company three, but because the total control on colors and uh, information on the shadows that now you have or you don't. The whole final scene at the airport, because you can make the faces softer and bring the moods down and reveal what's in the far background and a number of other situations, uh, to me, makes the film better. Uh, new technology. I think a very interesting thing that happened here is the scene between Amy Brenneman and Robert De Niro on the terrace that calls for this ocean of lights. Mm. And uh, in a very weird uh, situation, I proposed to Michael that we take a look at this new technology, which is the computer, mm. images put together with a computer, right? And I went out, shot some tests, and the ability of uh, shooting the landscape at low frame rate. So, you know, uh, mm. raising the visibility even of the clouds in the sky, which are mm. a typical landmark, landmark in Los Angeles. They are lit from the orange light of the city. Uh, and then we shot the scene on the real location, mm. just putting a small green screen behind the actors. So the shot from behind is a slower frame rate to raise the exposure. Yeah, Good catch. It's uh, all done with, it's all done with, uh, we're in, we were in the real location. Yeah. With it, you know, up above uh, Sunset Plaza, and you're looking out at the night. But you couldn't photograph it on film. You could in high def, which is why I did what I did in, in, in um, you know, collateral. Mm. So to, to be able to see into the night the way you could, what we did is we put green screens up, blocking the actual view, shot the scene, and then took the green screens down and then shot the background, but at three frames per second so we could get exposure. Right. And cool. so that's so it was... Uh, yeah, that's beautiful. Anyway. And Michael, talk about the locations a little bit because it's an incredible epic and there's so much scope. It captures Los Angeles, a modern Los Angeles, in a way that I think no other film has to the extent, there's no nostalgia to it. It's, it's a very clear view of a modern Los Angeles. I mean, it extraordinarily, you know, begins with someone arriving on a train, which, you know, is not something you normally associate with LA, but it has this feel of Los Angeles the whole way through as a playground, as a place to get lost in, as a sort of prison for these characters, so many different things. Um, the whole film was shot on location, you didn't build any sets. Did you build sets into locations, or was it just take it as you no, find it? No, uh, there are, if there was a set, I don't remember which one it was. The whole thing we shot in ninety five locations. So it was all it's an wow. all location picture. And How I, many I, days for ninety five locations? One hundred and seven. Wow! So just moving but all who, the time. But who's all counting? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had I have had I had and still have you know, the best location manager on the planet, Janice Pauly, who's here someplace. <laughs> And, uh, and Lori Bolton, and um, but, but it's, it's, it began with wanting to know Los Angeles, and I realized after having lived here for about ten or twelve years at that time, or actually twenty years, that I didn't really know LA at all. We kind of we kind of moved through a kind of a cultural self-imposed ghetto of the places that we go to in in in, in our industry. And there's, I know that there's a lot more a lot more out there. So I started. Uh, going out at night with uh, Tom Elfmont, who's also here, um, who was a commander in LAPD, and we would go out about nine o'clock at night on Friday and Saturday night, and just answer random radio calls wherever they were all over the city, and we did this for about five or six months. And, and, um, that's, and we discovered 
the locations that are there as well as as well as uh, there's a lot of dramatic content. But uh, and then Guzmano Cesaretti, who's also here, was with me on all on all these various adventures that we had. Um, the strangest place we encountered is the chop shop, which was mm -hmm. in an unincorporated part of Wilmington that had, and that was a, um, there was, it was a pit bull fighting arena, an illegal abattoir, and something else, and that vaquero who's riding on horseback who came through, he was from that. The guy who owned it was this albino guy who became the doorman at PJ's. And PJ's was a real place uh, for a while. I think it was in the basement of a Payless shoe store off, off La Brea. It was the after hours club. Um, we didn't shoot it there, but it, so and we, it was just a real discovery of, of what Los Angeles uh, what Los Angeles is. And I mean, you're from Chicago, and the original inspiration for the film was a Chicago incident. You never thought about doing it in Chicago. Somehow, Los Angeles became. I mean, it's a character in the film. It seems like it's the, almost the driving force behind the film to sort of capture that urban environment. Yeah, it's, 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 for me, LA is more is more transient. It's more surreal. It, there's, it's more balkanized in a great way and presents so many locations. So I mean, it really becomes it's, it's a dramatic choice. It's not. It's, it's all based on the same kind of scene analysis that you know that I will work with with an actor or that we, that, that we would do in any of our rehearsals. The same kind of scene analysis tells you know helps me try to figure out what you know what what the location should be. So it's not by accident that. Bob is driving from having um, uh, discovered Treo, mm. uh, Danny Treo, and, and that betrayal, and gets the information to go after Van Zant that he's driving through that, the black refineries, which are like you know diamonds in the night. Um, you know, it's kind of a hellish landscape. So you know, you try to you try to try to find uh, try to find places that speak, you know, speak to you.